Well, good afternoon, OWC. Welcome to Friday, July 24th. We made it through another hot, steamy week. Um, today it's about 84 degrees in Connecticut. Uh, it's going to be cloudy towards the rest of the afternoon. No rain, so to speak. Uh, hit about 86 high today. Uh, looks like we're in for a good, steamy, but hot weekend. 92 on Saturday, partly cloudy, and a high of 96 on Sunday. So remember your hydration, everybody. Sunscreen. And try to keep heavy activities outdoors, like mowing the lawn, um, or going for a walk, or exercising out of the midday heat. Okay? So let's start today with this day in history. What national day is it? I'm having some real slow internet connectivity today. So we'll wait a minute while this loads up. Ah, we've got a great couple of days. Today is National Amelia Earhart Day. Let me see if I can get the computer to pull that up. As you know, Amelia Earhart was a aviator, um, and on each day, July 24th, National Amelia Earhart Day honors the achievement of the aviation pioneer on the date of her birth. Author and American aviation pioneer Amelia Mary Earhart was born on July 4th, 1897. One of Earhart's most important achievements took place on May 20th, 1932. In 1927, Charles Lindbergh completed the first solo flight across the Atlantic. He flew from New York to Paris in 33 hours and 30 minutes. Earnhardt took off from Grace Harbor, Newfoundland, four years to the day Lindbergh completed his flight. Throughout the flight, she faced many technical difficulties. Her goal was to land in Paris, France, the previous year, Ruth Nichols also attempted to fly solo across the Atlantic. Had she succeeded, she would have been the first woman to do so. However, Nichols crashed while attempting to land for refueling in New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, which is a province of Canada. Due to Earnhardt's challenges in flight, she landed the Red Lockheed Vega 14 hours and 16 minutes later in Derry, Ireland. All in all, the flight was successful. She became the first woman pilot to complete the journey. Following Earnhardt's record-setting accomplishment, she earned the United States Distinguished Flying Cross. Um, she broke a lot of records, wrote a lot of best-selling books about her flying experiences, and instrumental in the formation of the 99s, an organization for our female pilots. She joined the Purdue University Aviation Department as a faculty member in 1935 to counsel women on careers and help inspire others for her love of aviation. She was the member of the National Women's Party and supporter of the Equal Rights Amendment. In 1937, Earhart attempted to circumnavigate the globe. Unfortunately, her Purdue-funded Lockheed Model 10 Electra disappeared over the Pacific Ocean near Howland Island in July. Today, her successes continue to draw women around the globe to the world of aviation. Fascinated with her life career and disappearance continues to this day. Whether or not the mystery will ever be solved remains to be seen. So that's pretty cool. That is certainly one of a kind. About a year ago at the public library, I saw a woman who does reproductions of famous people in history and their stories. She acts it out as a, like one act play. And she came to the Tallinn Library and she did Amelia Earhart from when she was a young girl all the way up to her last flight. Um, and she was really, a, the, the actress was wonderful and she did a great job of portraying Amelia Earhart who was just a very spirited, intelligent um, woman ahead of her times. Um, not everybody had the opportunity to fly planes, especially women back in her age and day. So next we have National Cousins Day. Recognizes the lifelong relationships that grow among cousins, our first friendships, 
often form with cousins as young as infants and endure a lifetime. Whether cousins grow up together in close-knit families or only see each other occasionally, they share common memories through grandparents, aunts, and uncles. At family gathering, cousins entertain each other and can get in trouble a lot too. I certainly got in my share of trouble with my cousins. They celebrate their birthdays and might even blow out each other's candles in their cousins' annoyance. While their siblings irritate them, cousins become an ally. Sometimes cousins seem like more like siblings, especially if they're only children. As cousins grow up, watching their children grow reminds them of their youth, and that's when the new cycle begins. The day celebrates every age of cousins, new baby cousins and cousins whose babies are all grown up. So I think I should give my cousins a call tonight. What do you think? I certainly have um, several cousins that I grew up with, and yes, we did get in trouble. One night, my two... Um, First cousins and I were sitting outside uh, with my sister and I, and we were told to eat our dinner before we could go to the boardwalk. And the boardwalk was a fabulous place to be in New Jersey um, during the summer months. There was rides, there was the smell of the ocean, taffy, and needless to say, the dinner that night was fish sticks. Three of the four of us did not like fish sticks, but again, we could not go to the boardwalk unless we had eaten our dinner. So the fourth cousin of us, who happened to like fish sticks, took one from the team and ate about probably 12 fish sticks um, so that we could all go to the boardwalk. I don't remember her getting sick that night, which is probably a marvel into itself. Because somebody who eats a great quantity of fish sticks and then gets on a roller coaster doesn't make good for a good match. Today, for those of you who are drinkers of tequila, it is National Tequila Day with a little lime and salt. Mix up a margarita, paloma, or mamacita to celebrate the day. People have been making tequila for centuries and it was once known um, as a mezcal wine. Um, tequila is distilled from a type of agave plant. Um, it started around the 16th seventh, uh, century Cortez arrived on the North American content with the Spanish conquistadors. They didn't care much for the fer fermented Mexican wine served to them. However, the Spanish introduced copper stills to the population, entered this distilling process. Now our story takes us to Tequila, Jalisco, Mexico, located in the West Valley of Guadalajara in Jalisco, Me Mexico. The town made a name for themselves by distilling blue agave. Even though a very of succulents grew in the Mex Mexican produce, only one delivers the nectar to distilled te tequila. Uh, blue agave grows in the highland region. Indeed, the unique growing conditions contribute to a large, larger sized, sweeter tasting agave. In contrast, agave grow in the lowland regions taste and smell more herbal. So, in Mexico, the law protects the production of tequila. The rule states tequila is only tequila if made with Jalesco. Additionally, the law limits production to the regions of the state of Guanajuato, Miocano, Nararit, and Napolapolis. That's a hard one to say. However, the same ingredients distilled anywhere else cannot be labeled as tequila. So, interesting, many names in the tequila business were the very first commercial producers producers of tequila. For example, Jose Antonio Cuervo held the first license for making the, f the favored beverage. He kept a well-known company too. The other two names include Don Sinobio Saza and Felix Lopez, whose bi business continue in some form today. So there you go. For those of you who are of an appropriate age, um, today is National Tequila Day. We also have National Thermal Engineer Day. Now, I don't know what a thermal engineer does. Let's see. Waiting for it to load up. Come on, Paige. We want to know what National Thermal Engineering Day is all about. Thermally speaking, July 24th, is an excellent day to acknowledge National Thermal Engineering Day. Celebrate the contributions of thermal engineers of one of the hottest days of the years. 
Electronic thermal management is pivotal for its longevity and reliable operations, yet thermal engineers who make this possible receive little to no recognition. The market sector doesn't matter either. They may work in a consumer electronics, large data centers, or cutting-edge biomedical or aerospace electronics. Either way, they contribute to the cornerstone of our national technological advancement. Without thermal engineers, modern life doesn't function. As specially trained professionals, thermal engineers develop solutions to complex systems. While they focus maybe on the mechanical thermal engineers and coordinate with other specialties too, by combining communication and organizational skills, these specialists ensure operations continue to run smoothly. On a project, these skills bring a project to an economical and timely resolution. Their efforts create more efficient and innovative infrastructure. The results of their efforts are all around us every day. Some work with heat management, um, but they certainly don't sweat the small stuff. So it's only fit to recognize them on one of the hottest days of the year. Wow. So this was um, recognized as a national day in July 2004 by a professional organization called the Advanced Thermal Solutions Incorporated, ATS. They wanted to recognize the innovation and commitment to the motivation and dedicated electronics and engineering industry. They firmly believe that the importance of advancing the thermal engineering industry and is committed to providing the electronics with highly quality, cost-effective thermal management and electronics packing solutions. So there you go, that's a mouthful. Moving right along, this day in history, I'm going to turn this camera, I think, around. Let's see if I can do that. No. Well, and anyway, the picture went out on my computer anyway. The summer of savings oh. event is finally here at your local Ford store. Enjoy the sun with the hottest deals on America's best-selling brand. Okay, this is from the History Channel. From the unbeatable... We, we have a... Um, Advertisement I'm sh trying to shut off. Okay. Ooh, and let go away. It's a stubborn little lad. Okay. Machu Picchu ruins were discovered today by an American archaeologist. On July 24th, 1911, American archaeologist Hiram Bingham gets his first look at the ruins of Machu Picchu, an ancient Inca settlement in Peru that is now one of the top, world's top tourist destinations. Tucked away in the rocky countryside north of Cuzco, Machu Picchu is believed to be a summer retreat for Inca leaders whose civilization was virtually wiped out by the Spanish invaders in the 16th century. For hundreds of years afterwards, its existence was a secret known only to peasants living in the region. That all changed in the summer of 1911 when Bingham arrived in a small team of explorers to search for the famous lost cities of the Incas. Traveling on foot and by mule, Bingham and his team made their way from Cusco to the um Urumbaba Valley, where a local farmer told them of some ruins located at the top of a nearby mountain. The farmer called the mountain Machu Picchu, which meant Old Peak, in the native Quechua language. The next day, July 24th, after a tough climb on the mountain's ridge in cold and drizzly weather, Bingham met a small group of peasants who showed him the rest of the way. Led by an 11-year-old boy, Bingham got his first glimpse of the intricate network of stone terraces marking the entrance to Machu Picchu. The excited Bingham spread the word about his discovery in a best-selling book, sending hordes of eager tourists flocking to Peru to follow in his footsteps up the Inca Trail. The site itself stretches an impressive five miles, with over 3,000 stone steps linking it to many different levels. Today, more than 300,000 people tramp through Machu Picchu every year, braving the crowds, the landslides to see the sun set over the towering stone monuments of the sacred city. A marvel at the mysterious splendor of one of the world's most famous man-made wonders. That's pretty cool. I'll try to post a picture of this later. And last but not least, who do we have 
for birthdays in history this week. Let's see. In 1953, on this very day, you had Steve Grogan, which is the NFL quarterback, New England Patriots. 1953, you had Claire McCaskill, an American politician, junior senator from Missouri. 1954, Philippe Elliott, he's a race driver in the Grand Prix. In 1955, Lubo Odenakova, USSR team handball Olympic gold medalist, 1976 and 1980. In 1956, Charles Crist, governor of Florida, was born. In 1957, Pam Tillis, American country singer, song a credit known to Melancholy Child, born in Plant City, Florida. 1957, Robbie Gray, an English rocker. Do any of you people know these people? Some of them sound familiar. In 1959, Edward Liddy, Union, Georgia, was a judo fighter. He brought home the Olympic bronze medal in 1984. Let's see, who else do we have? In 1962, on this day, Kevin Butler, an NFL kicker for the Chicago Bears, was born. Let's see, who else? We might know. In 1965, Kadeem Hardison, New York, American actor, A Different World, The Sixth Man, was born. Let's see, who else would we know here? There's quite a list. In 1968, Laura Leeton, now Miller, uh, American actress, Melrose plays Pretty Little Liars, uh, born in Iowa City, Iowa. In 1968, Kristen Chenoweth, American singer and actress. Some of you will remember her from Glee. Uh, or she also was in the Broadway production of Wicked. 1968, Colleen Duran, American comic book writer and artist. Let's see. 1969, Rick Fox, NBA guard, Ford for the LA Lakers and Boston Celtics. Nineteen seventy one, Patty Jenkins was born on this day. She's an American film director, monster, Wonder Woman, and she was born in Victoriaville, California. In nineteen seventy two, Kayo Hiroki, a Japanese sumo wrestler, was born. Let's see. A lot of Olympic gold medalists and bronze and silver. In nineteen seventy six, Anita Now, an American breaststroke swimmer, um, was born and she brought home a gold medal in 1992. Let's see who else we have here that we would know. 1981, Summer Glau, an American actress, was born on this day. Ah, 1987, Mara Wilson um, was an actress, was born, and she was in Mrs. Doubtfire. Fire. 1998, Bindi Irwin, Australian TV personality, conservationist, and daughter of Steve Irwin, was born in Australia. So there you go. So quite a few people that we might know out in uh, pop history, uh, culture history, or sports were born on this very hot day in July at uh, various different years. So that's about all I have for you now. We're looking forward to having a nice, quiet, but very warm weekend. Drink lots of lemonade and water. Remember your sunscreen and certainly your bug spray. And we have an exciting week of programming coming up the week of starting Monday the 27th at noon. Um, our theme for the week is going to be animals. And we're going to have a lot of um, tours of different places where you might see animals. Rumor has it we're going to go and see some cows being milked, um, animals being fed, maybe a tour around Horse Barn Hill at Yukon. Um, knowing that there are some restrictions, we can't go into the barns um, because of the virus 
uh, but we have a lot of exciting things coming down and I will follow through with some interesting facts about Machu Picchu for you to read up and uh, learn about and if anybody has anybody who's a thermal engineer and would like to share information about their profession or anybody who's ever vacationing at Machu Picchu has pictures that they'd like to share feel free to post them have a good weekend everybody see you on Monday